one of my best friends told me about it. That's what he was doing, selling water. You either got it or you don't. Yeah. It can't be on you, it gotta be in you. This is Atlanta, Wakanda. You would think this was goddamn a third world country with these kids. You know what I'm saying? These kids live in Atlanta. Hey, is this an old this an old story? No, this is new. This is Hold on, I thought we already two days got to the ago. point. I thought we already got to the point where we knew we know these motherfuckers are criminals and we not, you know what I'm saying? We don't appreciate the water boy shit no more. We trying to get them jobs and shit. It's now they fucking put them back in the spotlight. Ago. This is two days ago. That's nothing crazy. changed. Nothing ever changes in Blackistan, man. Nothing ever changes. Oh, you got to be in you. From Buckhead to the West Side, it's been nine years since Amir started selling water bottles. Well, my first time. This dude been selling water for nine years. And look at how they sell it. Look, this isn't selling. This is harassment. You fucking stuck in traffic and shit. And these motherfuckers run up on your car. Begging. This is not fucking selling water. This is fucking extortion. You started selling water bottles. Well, when I first came to Water Boy, I was, I was probably like seven, eight years old, and I was like, I was with three of my friends. I was like, we should go sell water. Serge and Makai joined in, making it their after-school activity. My first day when I made my first money, I was happy. Like, I just went back every day since then. I was addicted. Like, I ain't just left. I, I always been addicted for it. Well, that day was a wonderful day. <laughs> no, I was just doing it. Like once I sold the first case, like it was just like I had it. I seen it. Like it was no stopping. Like man, yeah, 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 man. Here, the street corner sales game is nothing new. Filmmaker Greg Williams has documented footage like this of the Water Boys over the last few years. Selling water is an Atlanta thing. It's a hustle. Even when I yo, that's still like. Why there gotta be three, four of them in your fucking window to sell a bottle of fucking water, man? Bro, this Come is on, man. this this is insane that they're trying to make this seem like this is like a good constructive thing, and we Stop all know Linda. we are we all know that this is like literally extortion and like no one likes this shit, nobody. It's crazy, man. This is like gaslighting. And this is abusive, man. This is abusive to what these people are doing. It's giving me like this. it's giving me like that uh fiery but mostly peaceful protest vibe. Yeah, exactly. He's over the last few years. Selling water is an Atlanta thing. It's a hustle. Even when I first came down in 2012, it was a thing like, hey, you ain't got any money. Go sell some water. I used to do it in front of the club. Like, it, it was an Atlanta thing. How much does that one case, like, cost you? And then how much profit would you normally make I like out of it? I like $4, $5, but I'd be the maid, like, 200 300 Like, I make a good profit out of water. Like, if I could just get one case. I because they're not getting a dollar for each water. They're going up to people's windows and extorting them. Because it's the only way you make $200, $300 off of a $5 case of water. They just snitched on themselves right there. Nothing. How much does that one case like cost you? And then how much profit would you normally make? I out like of it? four, five dollars, but I'd be the man like 200, 300. Like, I make a good profit out of water. Like, if I could just get one case, I might be set for the whole day. That's how I always had that mentality about water. Ever since I just started going to that, that same little corner by myself. And once I just started moving, I'm like, this corner ain't making enough money for me. I'm gonna go to Midtown, Buckhead, where the money be at. They hustle so hard to provide. Tell me about just what you've observed from the passion that's in their heart. Some of these boys know the situations they're in. They know what you've observed from the passion that's in their heart. Tell me about just what you've observed from the passion that's in their heart. Some of these boys know the situations they're in. They know where they come up from and they go for what they know is survival mode. So in that survival mode, I feel like selling water is a thing that like, as, as it relates to the exchange and commerce, it's a perfect profit margin flip. Like 
it makes sense on the business end. But if you starving at home or you really like taking care of the family, you gonna that's an easy way to do something is that you don't get in trouble for. And is their hustle bigger than just the bottles? It's way bigger than just bottles. Their hustle, Water Boys story is bigger than just a bottle because it's it's just what it is, it's a life resource. They wouldn't water is a life resource. Everybody needs water to live. How my life was going, like we were struggling, mom struggling, so it was just like I I gotta go provide, at least help my family or for myself. It feel good to help your mom struggling, like or your little brothers and sisters buy something from the store. It just feel good to just help back give, like to do something. Feel good. So. And I can better my family life and make sure they my little sister, my little brother, never had to do what I had to do, have to run on the streets to to find this, to find the money, to do this. Like basically I wouldn't say no hand out, no bird to feed, but basically that's how that's how I wanted to be for them. They don't have to ask nobody for nothing. They don't have to you see what I'm saying? Like, it's all they light already set for them. The story of, it's just a, a kid trying to survive the circumstances. That's the story of a black youth in Atlanta. It just make me feel good. I can buy my mama some, my brother some. I can buy my family some, and it won't hurt me. Most water boys grow up fast based on circumstances bigger than them. When you get this age, you want to be grown? Like, when you really want, you want to be grown? Like, they will come with being grown. Like, you want to be grown? Like, you really got to go, like, make sure Everything, everything for you. Like it ain't no more mama, daddy. Can't depend on them. Like it's it was just like I had to depend on myself. Like you gotta you, you wanna be grown, so you gotta be grown, you gotta take care of yourself. What sets this trio apart from the other water boys, they transitioned from making street sales to building a brand. Started our own clothing line for water, man. The so Black Youth in Atlanta made their own rules because there wasn't many adults giving them uh, valuable advice. It might be some advice, but they're young, but they're not dumb. They know when you they know when you have ulterior motives as an adult, and I feel like that's what prompts them to make their own rules. That's how the brand Water Boys in the Hood was born. It's a pathway of turning their hustle into a business. <laughs> From hoodies, hats, t-shirts, and branded bottles, their energy has shifted to think bigger. Water boys in the hood, they selling merch out here, you understand that? And you know, they run a legitimate bidding, man, and I support that. What does Water Boys in the Hood represent? What do you hope that it stands for as a collective? Um, young entrepreneurs who are selling water and started their own brand or who translated from selling water into a, into a brand that can provide for for them. What did that moment really show about black youth in Atlanta? It showed that black youth in Atlanta, that they're the future. You know how I say it takes a village? <laughs> yeah, that filmmaker is, he's dumb. Yeah, that filmmaker is very low IQ. He but, can't really yeah. articulate what he want to say at all. But uh, I ain't mad at them for the brand. I mean, some people love dumb shit and they, you know what I'm saying, invest in dumb shit. So that boys in the hood and all the other shit, if that's your culture and that's Atlanta culture, that'd be black culture. So, yeah, we like dumb shit. So that shit going to sell. Good for them. Taking advantage of dumb people. I mean, what's the alternative? Kill Boys? Uh, Kill Boys already got a shirt, too. And uh, that shit sells well, too. Because we like dumb shit. <laughs> we support everything. What what Jesse Lee Peterson said, we support everything that's of evil substance. <laughs> Yo, facts. Hey, that man said we support everything of evil. If it's of bad nature, we we own it, bro. We support that shit. And since gliders hate the water boys, we love the water boys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it's not just Atlanta thing. I mean, that's all over. I mean, we got the Umbritas in, in New York selling water and canepas and, and, and mangoes. Yeah, this is but this this water boy thing is a little different. It's an extortion. Like they they you have to give them something. They make you feel like you have to give them something. Oh, oh, no, oh I know. This like this like the Baltimore ones, right? Yeah, like the squeegee boys, very yeah, much the similar. Squeegee, the squeegee and water boys. Mm -hmm. Hey, water boys, I got I got a lot of homeboys that live in Atlanta. 
this shit here is crazy. Like people running lights, getting into accidents, all type of shit to get away from them. Yeah, they ain't never got changed for you. You know what I mean? No change, never change. That's how he makes three hundred dollars on a um, you know what I'm saying, on a five dollar case of water. Yeah, yeah, I don't front though. In, in ninety degree weather, when I when I was a truck driver in New York City, and uh, the 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 water bottles, man, they came in handy, man. It's too hot for that. Yeah, no doubt. But um, yeah, definitely. Um. It. What did that moment really show about black youth in Atlanta? It showed that black youth in Atlanta, that they're the future. You know how to say it takes a village? It's a real thing. As a former water boy himself, Greg Williams knows that the difference between a bust and business is mentorship. Just tell them like, yo, it's a different way you can, you can do this. We got our own water, our own brand of water. My big brother Greg came with the brand. And his brother made the logo for us, and he just put it on there. And once he did that, I just been locked in with the brand ever since. I mean, they just stole that logo anyway. If water is a life resource, what do the boys need to nourish their mind and their imagination? Education. Water is a life resource, so education. Just the word, it means nothing. That word means nothing to him in his mind's eye when he's saying it. Been locked in with the brand ever since. If water is a life resource, what do the boys need to nourish their mind and their imagination? Education. Water is a life resource, so in that sense, I feel like education is a thing that they can nourish their minds and their mindset. Yo, my man is literally like brutal. <laughs> Yo, so, what is he talking my about? My man, my uh, man sound, my man sound like uh, the ex Kennedy motherfucker trying to explain uh, what is that racism? <laughs> that motherfucker. Look, you know how you uh, you define some. You yeah. find a word with the word and the definition and shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Circular definition. Yeah, yeah. So define strong. Strong is you know when you strong, man, and life and strong. Yeah, man. This shit bad, man. This the this the best of us though. You get what I'm saying? Like to them. Yeah. This is this terrible. Is the best. That's the best we terrible, got, man. <laughs> Wow. That they can nourish their minds and their mindset. I was just a full time water boy. So, show me how to sell, like how to get shirts, how to make them. Like, we water boys. You know, we water boys. All we had to do was add this in the hood. We, everybody call up water boys already. As their clothing brand and LLC grows, they're now visiting water plants to learn about water distribution. We have good stuff going on right now. We got our own brand of water and stores right now. It showed me as I go look, basically like, when I start selling my hats and all my merchandise, I got more support than selling water. You see what I'm saying? It was like, oh, these boys doing something good for themselves. They got their own clothing brand. Started out selling water. A notorious brand is really Atlanta youth's way of finding a way. My dream is to be like successful so I don't have to work as hard at work and just give back. And I'm and I my dream is to be successful so I don't have to work as hard as I work. In order to be successful you're gonna have to work hard. You have to keep working hard, bro. Really Atlanta youth's way of finding a way. My dream is to be like successful so I don't have to work as hard at work and just give back. And I'm and I'll be like free, like just life, like living free, like just happy. This can't be a high school graduation.
Damn, that's the entire documentary. Yeah. Not one complete sentence was fucking stated in this whole documentary. Nobody said a complete sentence, a proper sentence. Not one. Wow. I mean, at least the, at least the narrator was, was so speaking positive. clearly. Oh, yeah, the, narr- the, narr- the narrator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anybody that was fucking... <sighs> it's bad, man. <laughs> 